So just very quickly, do keep an eye out on our website and social media for updates. Sign up to our mailing list. We send out information about all events and activities and updates via this as well. So do register to our mailing list if possible. And keep in mind our help desk email. If you do have any queries, um, you are free to reach out to us. Again, how will applicants and grantees be supported? So yeah, we are all here um, and on hand to offer any support via the help desk. So please do reach out with those queries. If you can't find the answers in our guidance or on our various information webinars, um, then yeah, please do reach out. And as mentioned earlier, we are establishing a learning and networking community called the Ocean Community. So we will be inviting grantees to sign up to this, um, and this will be a really crucial and important place and hopefully help promote mutual learning, peer support and networking. So what we are happy to share is this, this is up now, and um, I think Nicola or Valentina will share a link in the chat of how you can access this. Um, but the site itself is hosted on the Ocean Decade Network. To be able to um, sign up to this session, you will need to register to the group, sorry, you will need to be able to register a account on the Ocean Decade. Once you have registered an account, then you will need to search for our Ocean Grant community, which you can see on the screen now. The Ocean Grant community is our um, yeah, community page. And as you can see from the headings on the menu here, we will have a home page with more information about the fund. We will have a live feed for people to be able to um, discuss and um, post any questions and queries and see and solicit support from either ourselves or the technical experts that are part of this community. There's a members page that allows you to see who else is a member of the group and that this hopefully will help to support networking, maybe identification of partners or other people working in the same areas. We will also feature our upcoming events and any um, important information in the media centre. And then we will also for, um, facilitate some forums that will help conversations around specific um, targeted areas. So please do sign up. It's a, a great place to, to start to build a better understanding and to also learn from others who are working in a similar space and on similar projects around the world. Just finally, webinars. So we have ran our how to submit an application webinar last week. And this recording will be up on our YouTube account shortly. So if you miss this, please do go back and take a look. Obviously, we're speaking to you this morning about how to develop your successful concept note. And then we do have one more session on the 28th of February, which will be an open Q&A session. So for this session, we want to create a space that you can bring forward any questions that you may have and ask those to us ahead of the deadline for submitting your application so that you can factor in those responses um, before finalising your application. Just some frequently asked questions quickly. So um, I think we've touched upon this first one already about not having a registration certificate. Can you still apply? So yes, for a community grant under £100,000, then we um, would accept a letter of support from host government or an FCDO post as evidence that you are a non-profit organisation working in that country. We are formally registered in a legible country, but are a local branch office entity of an international organisation. Are we eligible to apply for a community grant? So as long as your organisation is registered in that same country as your project and is based in an eligible country, then yes, you would be open to apply for that community grant. But we do encourage umbrella organisations or members of uh, wider kind of international organisations to also partner with local organisations to, to manage and meet the objectives of OCEAN and working at that local grassroots level. <clears throat> um, can an organisation that's based in a non-eligible country be the lead organisation for a project? So for a community grant, no, all lead organisations must be based in the same country as the project will be implemented in. So unfortunately for this one, uh, for this specific funding pathway, that won't be possible. And then can we partner on projects if we are a government agency, intergovernmental organisation or work in the private sector? I think this was covered slightly earlier by Valentina. So yes, you can partner, but government agencies and international intergovernmental organizations cannot receive funding from ocean private sector organizations can partner um, as long as it does represent good value for money 
And then just some top tips. So please don't leave your applications to the last minute. Um, we are available to offer support, but if we get a flood of queries in the last few hours before applications are due, um, we will only have um, a limited amount of capacity to, to respond to people. So unfortunately, it may be that your response gets missed. So we do encourage you to not leave it to the last minute. Please start to make progress on your applications at an early as possible stage. And if you do have questions, reach out to us with lots of time before the deadline so that we can make sure that we can get back to you and help you with any support or requests you have. Make sure that you read the guidance thoroughly. This is all the information that we um, have on the programme. And so hopefully all of the questions you have could um, hopefully be answered by their guidance. But do reach out if, if you can't find the, the response that you need in there. Make sure that you answer the questions that have been asked and try to write clearly and concisely where possible so that you are very clearly explaining how you are responding to the question that has been asked there. And a good way to make sure that this is the case is to ask someone else to, to read your application for you to make sure that it makes sense. Because often when drafting your own response, you, you can um, maybe just miss certain points. And it's really helpful to get someone who's not been involved in the process to make sure that what you're writing makes sense. So please do recommend getting um, other people to assess your application and responses as well. In terms of um, expecting people to have prior knowledge, so this is a global fund. And so we, I think when drafting your responses, you should try to make sure that the people reading your application um, assume that they have no local or prior knowledge of your topic. Our expert committee is a panel of marine and development experts, but, um, they may not know every specific um, local, um, regional or like knowledge or topic. So, and it, it's good practice to just make sure that you assume no prior local or um, thematic knowledge of your area. And we do encourage you to try and submit your best application only. Um, you are eligible to apply for multiple applications, but I think Valentina shared yesterday, we're looking for quality applications, not necessarily quantity. So if you are managing or looking to submit multiple applications and think that it may impact the overall quality of your best application by submitting multiple, we would really encourage you to focus on just the one um, application and submit your best application for funding. And please don't be shy if you have any questions. We are here to answer anything. So, so do reach out uh, with any requests for support.